Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for our monthly GPU pricing update. And in the continuation of a trend that started in January of this year, it's another good month for buyers and we're inching ever closer to MSRP level pricing. We're not there yet, but the end is in sight. As to whether MSRP pricing is good enough at this stage in 2022, that's another question that I want to get to as we are approaching another generation of GPUs that's set to launch later this year. One crucial indication that pricing is improving comes from, oddly enough, the hideously expensive NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. This GPU has an MSRP of $2,000, and despite launching only a few weeks ago at the end of March, you can currently buy one from Newegg, new and in stock for that MSRP, a gigabyte gaming model. Buying a graphics card like this at the MSRP a few weeks after launch would have been completely unheard of back in 2022, as the slower RTX 3090 was able to command at least $2,600 on the scalper market with a peak of $3,600. Pricing has fallen considerably since then, and it feels like the 3090 Ti is a bit of a last hurrah for Nvidia trying to extract any remaining cash that they can from a quickly declining market. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their gaming peripherals. The GK71 Sonic Mechanical Keyboard includes a premium memory foam wrist rest and packs MSI Sonic Red 35 gram lightweight switches for ultra fast responsiveness and are one of the lightest linear mechanical key switches in existence. Then, taking your aim and shooters to the next level is the MSI GM41 lightweight 74 gram wireless mouse, complete with Japanese Omron switches and class leading Pixar PAW3370 optical sensor. Enjoy 80 hours of clean flick shots on a single charge, plus NVIDIA Reflex support too. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. As has been the case for several months now, it's possible to buy every current generation GPU from major retailers around the world. Availability is no longer an issue. That's not to say the semiconductor shortage is over. Companies like TSMC, for example, still have a major crunch on supply with record high levels of demand, and current estimates are suggesting that situation will not change for a few years. But these supply issues are no longer affecting graphics card pricing to the extent they once were, as the backlog of demand has cooled significantly. A large number of gamers have been able to buy cards in the last few months, and of course the demand from the crypto mining market has fallen off a cliff due to to low profitability. As it stands today, relatively expensive cards like the RTX 3080 Ti aren't even delivering $3 of mining profit per day, causing the time to profit from buying one of these GPUs at the MSRP to blow out over 400 days. Retail pricing at stores like Newegg continues to fall. For NVIDIA GPUs, last month we showed that, on average, NVIDIA GPUs were sitting at 50% above their MSRP for the cheapest in-stock models sold by Newegg. In April, that figure has dropped to just 28% above MSRP, thanks to a 12% drop in pricing month on month. There is a bit of variance though, depending on the exact models we look at. High-end cards, in particular the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti and RTX 3080 Ti, are basically available at the MSRP right now. However, they also launched with inflated MSRPs, much higher than the products NVIDIA launched back in 2020. The oldest models here, such as the RTX 3080 and RTX 3070, are still among the most overpriced cards in the lineup as those MSRPs are looking particularly unrealistic in the current market. We've also seen larger than average falls for two GPUs in particular, the RTX 3070 and RTX 3050. Last month, the RTX 3070 was one of the more overpriced models, sitting only $10 below the RTX 3070 Ti, making it a pointless purchase. You'd just get the Ti model. That's been corrected now, and there's a more sane price gap between those GPUs. But it's the RTX 3050 that's received the largest price cut, falling 19% from $390 to just $315 today. I suspect the RTX 3050's price adjustment has come due to pressure from AMD's mainstream graphics cards, in particular the RX 6600, which we've recently been recommending in our budget mid-range build series. AMD has been aggressively shipping RX 6600s into the market, and with its substantial performance lead over the RTX 3050, 26% for rasterization at 1440p from our day one review data, the RTX 3050 isn't a very attractive buy at a price higher than the RX 6600, so pricing has had to fall to keep up, although there's still a way to go before the 3050 reaches its MSRP. 
We can see more evidence of this when looking at AMD's price data from Newegg, using the same method of looking at the cheapest in-stock models. The RX 6600 is actually now being sold for slightly below the MSRP. There's an MSI model available for just $325 after a mail-in rebate, with its price coming down 19% since last month. This competition between the 6600 and RTX 3050 is great for consumers as it's putting serious price pressure on the lower parts of the market for the first time in years. Overall, AMD GPUs have seen less price inflation over the MSRP. Last month, the average figure was at 38%. We're down now to just 17%, meaning that when combining AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, current retail pricing is sitting at 25% above MSRP, the lowest rate since before next generation graphics cards launched. AMD cards fell in price by 15%, including substantial drops for high-end cards in particular the RX 6900 XT, which is also now available at its $1,000 MSRP after factoring in mail-in rebates. That puts it at the same price as Nvidia's RTX 3080, which again is great for competition. Here's how Nvidia and AMD are stacking up competitively at various price points. We've just been talking about crucial battles at $300 between the RTX 3050 and RX 6600, and at $1,000 with the RTX 3080 and RX 6900 XT. But the two brands are competitive elsewhere. Just recently, we made a video about how the RTX 3060 Ti stacks up against the RX 6700 XT at roughly the same price, around $580 US, and came to the conclusion that the GeForce product is the better buy here. AMD would need to further lower prices and get closer to the $480 MSRP for the 6700 XT to be a great option, which I expect to happen due to fierce competition right now. With pricing falling by 13% on average month on month, we're actually at the point where GPUs at the MSRP are within reach, at least for the majority of models. Today we are already seeing some cards back at their launch price, and we're only a month or two away from the same situation occurring with other cards if the pace of price reductions keeps up. I expect cards like the RTX 3090, RTX 3050, RX 6700 XT, and RX 6600 XT to all hit MSRP relatively shortly. The major issue for buyers holding out for that sweet MSRP goodness are the cards that launched in 2020 with pricing set for a totally different market. There are currently six cards across NVIDIA and AMD's lineups that are sitting with price inflation above 30%, and I think it's unlikely that pricing for those models will hit MSRP soon. Yes, I do expect pricing to still get better over time, but $500 RTX 3070s when the current price is $730 seems out of reach for now at least, save for the occasional hot price discount. As we talked about last month, the resurgence of the legitimate retail market for new graphics cards has crippled the scalper market on eBay. Pricing does continue to fall for all GPUs on eBay, in line with the reductions seen at retails like Newegg, but it still doesn't make much sense to buy a card from some random person on eBay when pricing is either the same as proper retailers or even higher in some instances. I'd choose the full service of a retail over a scalper every day, especially when prices are lower, as dealing with returns will be a much easier process. When new GPUs fall in price, so do used GPUs on eBay. Nvidia's GeForce 20 series fell in price by 16% on average, and now only the RTX 2060 Super sits above its launch MSRP. Cards like the RTX 2080 have substantially fallen in value over the last few months due to pressure in the mid-range, particularly from the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3060. Meanwhile, the RTX 2060 is falling in line with the retail market, aggressively dropping the price for the RTX 3050 and RX 6600. It's great to see a lot of price movement for the G416 series driven once again by strong competition for new GPUs in the $300 market. With that said, a lot of these used GPUs really don't make any sense, especially the GTX 1660 Super, which for used models costs just $15 less than the RTX 3050, but is slower and lacks features like DLSS. In today's market, these models should cost no more than the MSRP, otherwise they simply aren't worth it. Owners of NVIDIA Pascal era GPUs are dumping them on eBay at the moment. This series saw the highest month-on-month -month price drops, 19% on average, which is very substantial. It's good to see that all Pascal cards are now well below MSRP, which makes sense given their age. I really don't think it's worth investing in a 10 series card at the moment, aside from use as a cheap stopgap option, because they are too old at this point. 
AMD's Radeon RX 5000 series saw more modest price drops than Nvidia's last generation series, falling by 12% on average. However, since the start of the year, these cards have really fallen off a cliff. The RX 5700 XT was selling for $900 in the middle of December, and today they're just a touch over $500. That's how much impact the reduction in mining profitability has had, along with improved availability for current gen cards. Like with the G4 16 series, it doesn't make much sense for a gamer to buy one of these cards over a new product. Then we get to AMD's older GPUs, and pricing here has also fallen, though just by 7% on average. Vega cards have received the same large price correction since the start of the year, but only fell slightly this month. Meanwhile, the Polaris series has seen more typical price drops, though a lot of these cards aren't worth buying right now as a stopgap, aside from maybe the RX 570. For example, I would personally choose a GTX 1650 Super for $190 used over an RX 588 GB for $260 as they're both similar enough in performance. Overall though, what we've seen across this month for GPU pricing is very good news. April saw the largest reductions in GPU pricing of the year. In January, we saw around a 5% drop month on month, growing to around 8% in February, 12% in March, and now we've seen a 15% drop across the new and used markets. Some GPUs are currently available at the MSRP, and a bunch more will hit the MSRP within a month or two if the current trend we've seen in 2022 continues. These are all really positive signs, and I think it's safe to say the pricing woes of 2021 are behind us now, at least until next generation GPUs launch. One of the remaining questions though is whether MSRP level pricing is good enough for products that launched as far back as September of 2020 and with a new generation of GPUs on the horizon expected towards the end of this year. I think this depends on what sort of GPU you are interested in buying and of course your current situation. I'm sure many people are desperate and simply cannot wait another six months or more. But assuming you do have the capacity to wait, I think this can be split into two segments of the market. Right now, I don't think it makes a lot of sense for high-end buyers to splurge big cash on current-gen GPUs at or above the MSRP. When next-gen GPUs launch, AMD, and especially Nvidia, will likely release high-end products first, which they've been doing for generations now. This will cause those top-end, poor-value products to quickly lose their status in the market. A GPU like the RTX 3090 Ti, which just launched for $2,000, could be superseded this year by something much faster at a similar price. It would make much more sense for that sort of buyer to settle on an RTX 3080 at $1,000, but even products around that sort of price point are likely to be replaced. So it's a bit of a tricky situation, and I don't think cards with MSRPs over $700 are a sensible purchase at the moment with pricing as it is right now. I'd really want to see that RTX 3080 get much closer to $700 to make it worth buying with the impending launch of new GPUs. As for lower end GPUs, well, these are unlikely to be replaced anytime soon. Remember how long the wait was for cars like the RTX 3050 and RX 6600? The RTX 3050 launched 16 months after the RTX 3090, and the RX 6600 was 11 months after the RX 6800 XT. But it's not just this generation where more mainstream products have taken ages to appear. With the Turing and RDNA generations, it took both AMD and Nvidia around 6 months to launch sub $300 GPUs, and that was a market with normal, relatively good availability the entire time. With this in mind, it's likely that a replacement for a GPU such as the RTX 3060 is more than a year away. I'd have no trouble recommending people grab these lower tier models at the moment, maybe not the RTX 3060 because pricing is still heavily inflated, but cards like the 6600 XT and RTX 3050 are very unlikely to become old news within a year. Even when new high-end cards launch, these sorts of products will still be sold in the $300 range, just as Nvidia did with the GeForce 16 series after Ampere launched. Yes, you might see lower pricing if you continue to hold out, but substantial price to performance improvements I don't think are on the immediate horizon, especially with the market still recovering from insane pricing. Anyway, that's the way I see the market at the moment and whether it makes sense to buy a GPU right now. With pricing falling by over 10% each month, it does make it tricky to find the optimal point to jump in and make a purchase, but at least you have the data in front of you so you can make the call yourself. If you do want to support our independent hardware testing and the analysis we do like these videos, we do have our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description below where you'll gain access to some perks like Discord community, monthly live streams, and behind-the-scenes videos. But aside from that, 
You can always just support the channel by subscribing, liking the video, doing all that sort of good stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.